Hey guys, welcome back to another reading of Managing Oneself by Peter F. Drucker. Um, today's section, chapter, if you will, will be What Should I Contribute? And we'll go ahead and get into the reading. What Should I Contribute? Throughout history, the great majority of people never had to ask the question, What Should I Contribute? They were told what to contribute, and their tasks were dictated either by the work itself, as it was for the peasant or artisan, or by a master or mistress, as it was for domestic servants. And until very recently, it was taken for granted that most people were subordinates who did as they were told. Even in the 1950s and 60s, the new knowledge workers, the so-called organization men, look to their company's personal department to plan their careers. Then in the late 1960s, no one wanted to be told what to do any longer. Young men and women began to ask, what do I want to do? And what they heard was that the way to contribute was to do your own thing. But this solution was, was as wrong as the organization's men had been. Very few of the people who believed that doing one's own thing would lead to contribution, self-fulfillment, and success achieved any of the three. But still, there's no return to the old answer of doing what you are told or assigned to do. Knowledge workers in particular have to learn to ask a question that has not been asked before. What should my contribution be? To answer it, you must answer three distinct elements. What does the situation require? Given my strengths, my way of performing, and my values, how can I make the greatest contribution to what needs to be done? And finally, what results have to be achieved to make a difference? Consider the experience of a newly appointed hospital administrator. The hospital was big and prestigious, but it had been coasting on its reputation for 30 years. The new administrator decided that his contribution should be to establish a standard of excellence in one important area within two years. He chose to focus on the emergency room, which was big, visible, and sloppy. He decided that every patient who came into the ER had to be seen by a qualified nurse within 60 seconds. Within 12 months, the hospital's emergency room had become a model for all hospitals in the United States and within another two years, the whole hospital had been transformed. As this example suggests, it is rarely possible or even particularly fruitful to look too far ahead. A plan can usually cover no more than 18 months and still be reasonably clear and specific. So the question in most cases should be, where and how can I achieve results that will make a difference within the next year and a half? The answer must balance several things. First, the results should be hard to achieve. They should require stretching, to use the current buzzword, but also they should be within reach. To aim at results that cannot be achieved or that can be only under the most unlikely circumstances is not being ambitious. It is being foolish. Second, the results should be meaningful. They should make a difference. Finally, Results should be visible and, if at all possible, measurable. From this will come a course of action. What to do, where and how to start, and what goals and deadlines to set. So I really think what this section comes down to, you guys, is, you know, as the question asks, what should I contribute? You know, it's really like, what are you bringing to the table that can fix a problem? And so when you get this idea, when you get these ideas for what the market is looking for, what kind of a business is thriving in today's society and culture, you really got to hone in on what is needed at this present time and year and the phase of where really history's at, you know, if, if you think about it. I mean, if you really think about it, you got to think about where we're at in this time frame and how we are as a culture and society. 
And really, we're just starting to bring everything all together. So, I mean, like, for the knowledge workers, what should my contribution be? They talk about what does the situation require, you know, your strengths, the way of performing, your values. And then it goes back into asking the same question, you know, what should I contribute? What results have to be achieved to make a difference? And so that's really what it comes down to. How do you think in your life how you can make a difference and how you can make this kind of a change in the world? You know, how do you want to leave it? You know, leaving it better than you found it, of course, but like, how are you going to leave it better than you found it? All right, you guys, so what we'll do, we'll go ahead and talk about it in the comments down below. What should I contribute? How do you guys contribute in your lives and what is making a difference, you know, in where you're living at, your circumstance, your occupation, whatever it is, you know, how, how are you building this, this brand or working in, in marketing or your ideas that you have for your own thing. But other than that, I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.